In my years of working on AWS, I have come across engineers who are either confused or do not know the difference between the four core terms fundamental to keep their application and infra infrastructure up. Resiliency, disaster recovery, high availability, and fault tolerance. Most often, we use them interchangeably, but each of these terms have their own specific definition and role. By the end of this video, you should be able to understand each of these terms and their application. This is important distinction to not only pass your AWS certification, but to succeed as a cloud engineer. When building resilient architectures, one should embrace the idea. Failures are normal. Failures are rare when we are dealing with smaller systems. However, when dealing with large-scale systems, 100% operational excellence is near impossible to achieve. Therefore, the normal state of operation is partial failure. Be it Amazon or Netflix, running in partial failing mode is a viable option for most large-scale web applications. Failure may not be life critical, but can result in lost revenue, which is why you need to build a highly resilient architecture. And yes, there is a cost for being highly resilient. And this is the balance one should figure out. Building resilient architecture is not just about software. It starts at the infrastructure layer, progresses to network and data, influences your application design and extends to people and even your company culture. The two main important aspects to any resiliency strategy is disaster recovery and availability. Think of a disaster as an event that prevents your system from fulfilling its business objectives in its primary deployed location. An event could be a technical failure, a natural disaster, or human actions. Each of these potential disasters will also have a geographical impact that can be local, countrywide, or global. Both the nature of the disaster and the geographical impact are important considerations for any DR strategy. Disaster recovery is the amount of impact a business can take during a disaster, which is often defined in terms of RPO and RTO. A DR plan outlines how you intend to bring your company back to business as usual. But you also need a business continuity plan or BCP which is essentially a set of actions a company puts into motion when disaster strikes. The primary objective of DR is business continuity. It focuses on disaster events, whereas availability focuses on most common disruptions of smaller scale, such as component failures, network issues, and load spikes. Think of availability in three dimensions, single point of failure, high availability, and fault tolerance. In single point of failure, no requests are served in case of failure. For example, a single EC2 instance can fail for many reasons, hardware failure, network problems, or even AZ problems and so on. And same goes with a single RDS instance, which can fail for many reasons. To achieve high availability in EC2, you will need auto-scaling groups to have a fleet of EC2 instances serving requests in a redundant way. Or in case of RDS, one can use multi-AZ mode to achieve high availability. Now, HA does not guarantee 100% uptime. The goal of an HA design is to deliver 99.999% of operational uptime. The objective of 5 nines is achieved through the elimination of single point of failure in a system, and for which you can implement redundancy and failover to the secondary working components without any human intervention. But just having redundant components in place is not enough. A high available system is the one that has redundancy monitoring a way to identify failure detection and a mechanism to automatically fail over or fall back. For instance, Amazon EC2 compute resources are made highly available by using multiple instances at the same time to collectively process incoming requests or distribute workloads across, and they can be managed with EC2 auto-scaling. Auto-scaling allows for the health of Amazon EC2 instances to be monitored and also self-healed by spinning up new compute instances in the case of existing one fails. You can then top it off with an Amazon ERB which can distribute incoming requests to a group of Amazon EC2 instances and manage connectivity in the event of failure. Now one might think ELB is a single point of failure here. On the contrary, ELB is one of the services which is fault tolerant by default. 
99.999% uptime still means almost 5 minutes downtime per year. Even with this acceptable amount of downtime of 5 minutes a year, it can cost businesses up to thousands of dollars. And besides significant financial losses, downtime may have other serious implications such as damaged business reputation. Fault tolerance is a stricter version of high availability. HA focuses on delivering the minimal possible downtime, while FT goes further by delivering zero downtime. In the fault toleration model, high performance in the event of failure is not a top priority. In contrast, it is expected that a system can maintain operational performance but at a reduced level. Similar to high availability, fault tolerance also works on the principle of redundancy, achieved by running simultaneously one application on two servers. The keyword here is simultaneously. In FT model, the redundant systems are always up, running in parallel, actively mirroring each other, which also requires constant synchronization and hence costs more. Failure is inevitable for hard disk, network, power and so on. Fault tolerance deals with that problem. A fault tolerant system is built for failure. If a failure occurs, the system isn't interrupted and it continues to handle requests. Most of the higher level AWS services such as S3, SQS and ELB have been built with fault tolerance and high availability in mind. A few years ago, it was expensive to achieve fault tolerance, but in AWS, providing a fault tolerant system is an affordable standard now. Unfortunately, one important AWS service isn't fault tolerant by default, EC2 instances. A virtual server isn't fault tolerant. This means a system that uses EC2 isn't fault tolerant by default. But AWS provides the building blocks to deal with that issue. The most convenient way to make your system fault tolerant is to compose the system of fault tolerant blocks. If all blocks are fault tolerant, the system is fault tolerant as well. Many AWS services are fault tolerant by default. If possible, use them. Otherwise, you'll need to deal with those consequences. In addition, you can always design fault tolerant systems into your code. But that, I will leave for a future video.